Good morning, everybody out there in God's beautiful green planet. The sun is shining, the wind is blowing. It's a beautiful day. We give God glory for it. Due to the fact this coronavirus is still ramping through the planet, we still give God thanks for what he has done for us, for what he did for us, and for what he's about to do for us. We still give him thanks in the midst of this crisis with this coronavirus. To me, I would like to say something for a minute about this coronavirus. And that is, it's crazy. But I know this is not from God. Because God really killed with natural disasters if he choose to. He's not going to kill with a man-made dis disease. So, only thing I could say is, that I want to say is, now I hear it's a conspiracy theory, oh, they just released the virus because they want to bring in the 5G network and all type of new world order and this and that, mark of the beast, one world government, one world money, and they're using the coronavirus as an escape goat to fool the people. Well, I've lived in America since I was eight, for numerous amount of years. And I know one thing about America. They are a deceiving country. They would have you thinking this is happening when in actuality, this is happening. So I don't have no thoughts about the coronavirus or this conspiracy theory about the 5G New World Order Network. Only thing that I say is whoever released this virus they got to answer to God for that. As, as for the 5G network, I mean, they say it pushes out a lot of radiation that, you know, mess with your respiratory system. And that's the reason for the coronavirus. It's not really a virus. I don't care. But if it's bad for the people, then it's also bad for the government as well if they put it out. So I really don't know what to think. Only do only thing I do, I keep my mind on God. And with that being said, speaking of mind on God, this is what my lesson is about today. It's about your thought pattern, your mind. Because thoughts only run through your mind. And before I get into that, I would like to tell my viewers, if you like this message, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button. So when I do drop these new messages, you will also get them with an alert. So with this message I want to talk about today, your thoughts are your enemy. And not all of them. The thoughts that gathers in your mind is... Basically, you have to keep them in check. You have to really think about what just dropped into your mind. And before I get into that, Father God, may you open the minds of the people who are listening to this message so they can understand it. You said in your word, we don't have understanding and we need to ask you for understanding. So I'm asking you to open the minds of the people who hear this message and let them understand it and let it reside in their hearts and do not let the devil come and take it away from them. In Jesus' name, I ask of this. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, your thoughts that gathers in your mind, you have to really think about them because the devil uses thought patterns to fight against Christians. That's his only weapon. Thought pattern. He try to make his thoughts your thoughts. And he do it in a way to make you think that you are the one that's really thinking of these thoughts. When actuality, he's the one putting those thoughts in your head. If we go to the famous line that Christians even tell other Christians 
everybody know this famous quote by Jesus. And it's, and it goes like this, Satan, get behind me. Now, if you study the Bible and read that particular scripture, Peter was trying to tell Jesus that basically nothing is going to happen to you or I will not. I will not let anything happen to you. Jesus told Peter that he had to go die on the cross. So Peter was concerned because remember, this is the son of God. And the way he opened up Peter's eyes, Peter was astonished by Jesus. So Peter really cared about Jesus. So why would Jesus tell Peter, Satan, get behind me, when Peter was just showing a form of love and concern towards Jesus? And most Christians do not think about that. They just go around using the line, oh, Satan, get behind me, Satan, get behind me. What was the reason that Jesus told Peter that? And from my studies of the Bible and my studies on the thought pattern of the mind, remember the story said Peter pulled Jesus to the side. So it was just him and Peter. And Peter was rebuking him. So Jesus said, Satan, get behind me. Now, the reason why Jesus said that was because Peter was here, Jesus was here, and Satan was here. Now, the reason why Peter couldn't see Satan was because you have to understand that Satan is a spiritual being. They're demonic forces. They cannot just visualize themselves like that. The Bible says a demonic entity has to take over a living person in order to be seen. So if you do see somebody that's possessed, you're not going to actually see the demon that's inside that person. So that's the case that was going on with Peter. Peter couldn't see Satan, but he could hear him. Excuse me. He could hear him because Satan was behind Peter just whispering in his ears. And the words that Satan was giving Peter, Peter was actually saying those out of his mouth. So Jesus already knew that these words wasn't coming from Peter. That is why Jesus said, Satan, get behind me. The reason for that is once Satan is behind Jesus, Satan cannot whisper words in Jesus' ears. Because remember, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus know all about Satan. He created Satan, as a matter of fact. So, when Jesus told Peter, Satan, get behind me, he was actually talking to Satan. And Satan have to listen to what Jesus said. So, like I say, once Satan is behind Jesus, Peter's mind is now free to really understand what Jesus is saying. Because the devil is from behind Peter, whispering in his ears, and now he's behind Jesus. Now, once he's behind Jesus, he has to shut up because he knows he cannot get to Jesus' mind. So that's how Satan works on Christians and also non-Christians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says that the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbeliever. Excuse me. Allergies and it's a beautiful day. Satan is the God of this age. Remember, God, Jesus said to the world, the ruler of this world is Satan. God said to the people, the ruler of this world is Satan. He's the God of this age and he has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. You know, unbelievers are people who don't believe in God who don't believe in Christ. Unbelievers are people like Muslim and Hindus and people who worship Buddha. They don't believe in God and they don't believe in Christ. So they are unbelievers. And the Bible says, he blinds the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Jesus, who is the image of God. So basically, Satan is blinding the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot understand the gospel of Christ. 
so they cannot understand who Jesus really is and what Jesus did for them. Satan has blinded their minds to that. Now, it's understandably, if you're blind in the eyes and you cannot see, that's understandable. But it's dangerous when your mind is blinded and you can visually see. That means, even though you can see, you're walking around confused. You're walking around in darkness. And that's exactly what Satan is doing to the unbelievers. He has blinded their minds so they cannot see the gospel of Jesus Christ. He cannot, they cannot understand anything about Jesus. So Satan uses these mind tricks to get us to try to turn away from God because that's his only mission with Christians. He wants us to turn away from God and disobey God. Basically, he wants us to turn to him. So, and you know, if a Christian do that, then it is, your life is will be turned upside down. So Satan uses these mind tricks to get us to stray away from God. So I'm here to say that Christ, Jesus Christ, has come down to this planet and he has given us understanding of how to defeat Satan. Jesus told us that when we get these thoughts in our minds, we have to capture them. You capture every thought, every thought that comes to your mind. And this happens to believers and non-believers. So to the believers, every thought that comes to your mind, Jesus tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, that we have to capture every thought, capture it. Every thought that comes in our mind, we capture it and we bring it under the obedience of Jesus Christ. Basically, Paul is telling the people that when the thought comes in your mind, you capture it. Capture it means take it hostage and check it out to see if this is what Christ wants you to do. And if it's not what Christ wants you to do, you delete it. It's basically like when you uh, download an app on your phone and it says decline or accept. That's basically what you do. If the thought is of Christ, you accept it. If the thought is not of Christ, then you decline it. You delete it. So this is why Jesus said, capture every thought that comes in your mind. Because Satan is constantly, 24-7, working on your mind. Like the Bible says, he already has blinded the mind of the unbelievers. So if you know somebody that doesn't believe in Christ, you will see them acting in a way like they're crazy. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what to do with their lives. But for Christians who God has given the spirit of power, who's trying to straighten out their life, Satan will 24-7 attack you, especially if you're a beginner in Christ, if you have just gotten baptized and you're trying to understand God and understand Christ, Satan will attack you, excuse me, 24-7 to try to get you to go back to your old way of living. So you have to basically capture, and I'm serious, Jesus is serious about this, capture every thought and bring it under the obedience of Christ. So you can stay strong because Satan is constantly trying to drag you down. As you see here, it says the war is in your mind. And that's exactly what's going on up there. It's a war because you have the spirit and we're living in a fleshly body. Our fleshly bodies are connected to the world. So Paul said it's because of the war between the spirit and the flesh that I do the things I don't want to do. And the things I want to do, I cannot do them because of this war. Now, this war takes place in your mind. So once you capture the thought and bring it under the obedience of Christ and find out that it's not of Christ, then you could do what you want to do. This war can be easily controlled within your body. But you have to capture every thought that comes into your mind. Now, the Bible records that 
In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15, it says, A simple man believes anything, but a prudent man gives thought to his steps. That's, that's deep. Even though it, it may not sound deep, but that's very deep. Because, oh, you have to excuse people. We allergies of early morning, fresh air in Jamaica really makes your allergies act up. Pray to God to stop soon. Proverbs 14, 15. A simple man believes anything, but a prudent man gives thought to his steps. You hear that? Give thought to his steps. A simple man believes anything. The word simple there means, you know, not very intelligent. And if you're not very intelligent, you basically just believe anything you hear. While a prudent man, the word prudent means sensible and careful. You're sensible and you're careful of what you are thinking. So a prudent man gives thought to his steps. So basically, how can I illustrate this? Okay, let's say Satan drops a thought in somebody's head. Okay, like say a married man. And Satan wants this man to commit adultery. Some men rush and commit adultery when the thought drops in their mind. And some men, like me, give thought to that. Like, wait a minute, I'm married. Jesus don't want me to commit adultery because it said so in the Bible. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So, once I've captured that thought, I know that thought was of the devil. That was not of Christ. So, I wipe that out of my head because that's what a sensible and a careful man does with his thoughts. He, he watches everything and pays attention to every thought that comes in his mind and he carefully gives thought to what he does because once Satan drops that thought in your head and he sees that it hasn't been deleted, that you haven't captured it, he will constantly, constantly just drive it in. It's like a nail and you hit the nail and the nail is now in the wood. But in order for you to get that nail in there to secure that wood, you have to keep pounding it. So that's what Satan is doing when he drops the thought in your head and he sees that you haven't captured it to get rid of it. He said, oh, okay, you haven't captured it yet. Let me keep pounding it. And he keep pounding it and pounding it. Now, once he keep pounding it, and if he successfully pounded all the way down, now your mind downloads that thought into your heart. Because remember, the Bible says, Solomon said in Proverbs, we have to guard our hearts because out of our hearts is the wellspring of life. Jesus said, out of a, out of a man's mouth, the words that come out of man's mouth comes from his heart. So anything that a person does, it comes from the heart. So once Satan has totally drive that thought in your head, your mind, which is your conscious mind, automatically downloads it to your subconscious, which is your heart. Your heart is your subconscious mind. And once it's in your heart, it comes out into your action. You do it into your actions. That's why you would tell a person, oh, I love you with all my heart. Because you're showing them in action how much you love them. So you have to really guard your heart. So once that thought is hammered into your mind, it goes down to your heart and it comes out in action. That's why Christ said we have to capture it when it comes into our minds first. Because if it ever gets down into our heart, and the only way it gets to our heart, we have to constantly, Satan is constantly beating the hammer, beating that thought in. And we are constantly thinking about it. So once that goes to the level where it needs to go, it drops down into the heart and it comes out into action. So we have to really, as Christians, we have to really be careful with the mind. The mind is a very powerful tool. That's why God said, I will not control free will. God loves us so much, he gives us the right to choose. He could have easily just made everybody on the planet bow down and worship him and got rid of the devil. But he said, no, I love them too much. Let me give them the right to choose. And that's where our mind comes in. Our mind is our will. And our will is what 
gives us the right to choose. We choose the devil's side or we choose God's side. It's only two things, good and bad. So let us move on. I hope you guys, I am trying to make this understandably clear where you can get it into your minds and download it into your heart. That's why I gives you the verses to actually study. As a matter of fact, I didn't give you the verse which is to take every thought captive. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Let's back up here for a minute. I'm sorry. Let's back up here for a minute. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and that's verse 4. No, excuse me, that's verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Jesus tells us we have to capture every thought, and then we can move on back to Proverbs 14. And since we're done with that, let's move to Proverbs 21, verse 29. Proverbs 21, verse 29 says, A wicked man puts up a bold front, but an upright man, always behaving in an honest and moral right way, gives thought to his steps. That's what the word upright me always behaving in an honest and in an honest way now a wicked man puts up a bold front everybody know what a front is don't need to explain that but an upright man gives thought to his ways so an upright man always behaving in an honest way always thinking of the right thing to do he gives thoughts to his ways so we capture those thoughts and we, we give thought to it. Like, okay, is God does God want me to do this or not? And like I said, if God don't want you to do it, then you delete that thought from your head. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 11 says, When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put child childish ways behind me. You hear what Paul said? When he, when I was a child, I talked like a child. When you're a child, you talk like a child. When you're a child, you think like a child. And like the Bible say, a child is born with stupidity in their hearts. So when we're kids, we do stupid things. We think stupidly. But as a man, we put childish ways behind us. You ever seen an adult who act childish? It's crazy, isn't it? It makes you, if you're a loved one, it makes you upset if your mate is acting childish. It makes you, it really makes you upset. So, childish thoughts, that's not the way a man should be thinking. A man should have careful thoughts. A child does not think carefully. So, Jesus is letting us know that our minds is where the war is taking place. Our minds is what develops us into Christ. Like the Bible says, God wants us to have the mind of Christ. Christ's mind was a God-based mind. Christ's mind was always on God. As soon as he wake up, the Bible said Christ will go talk to God to find out what he has to do. That's why when Christ bumped into somebody who needed help, Christ would automatically help them because him and God already talked about that. So Christ had the mind of God. The Bible said we are to imitate God. And that's imitating God by imitating Christ, having the mind of Christ. Christ had a loving mind, a forgiving mind. When they cursed him, he forgave them. When they tried to kill him, he forgave him. Because that's the mind Christians need to have. Remember, Christ is our example of how to live on earth. So we need this mind of Christ. Because remember, when Christ told Satan to get behind him, Christ knew that Satan's words couldn't affect his mind. So that's exactly what Christ wants for us. To get in that mental state where Satan's words cannot affect us. And then we put into action what he does. Let's bring this to light a little more clear. When Satan, 
went in the Garden of Eden and lied to Eve. He deceived Eve. What did he tell Eve? He said, you will surely not die. You will surely not die. Because God knows whenever you eat that fruit, you will be like him. So, see, he put that thought in Eve's ear and it went into her mind. Now, Eve wasn't thinking about it because the Bible said when Eve looked at the tree again, she saw that the tree was good for gaining wisdom. Before, she never thought that the tree could give her wisdom. But when Satan came and planted that thought in her ear, she started thinking about it. And he kept beating that hammer and beating that hammer. And then she looked at the tree again. Now she saw the tree was good for knowledge. Picked the fruit, ate some, gave some to Adam, who was right there. Now Adam should have said, you know, come on, woman. God said we're not to eat from the tree. But he was passive with Eve. So Eve gave him a piece of the fruit. He ate it, and their whole world crumbled. From that they had two boys, one killed one, one son killed the other son. Just from one disobedience, their whole world crumbled. And that was because Satan put that thought in Eve's head and Eve followed through with it. So we see how dangerous the mind is. We have this saying, you have this saying in America a few years back, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And it really is. Because if you see a person who mind is not fully functioned in God, they don't know where they're going. They're like this, all over the place. Some people just don't know what to do with their lives. They become homeless. Their minds, Satan have played with their minds and their minds are gone. People in the asylums who say they're crazy, Satan has played with their minds. Either he have put thoughts in their head for using drugs, and they use it for years and years and years and years, and their mind is gone. But the mind is the centerpiece of a person's life. It is where you think. It is where you process ideas. It is where you have the common sense to settle down, get married, and raise a family. It's where God speaks to you. Because you will hear God's voice in your mind. The Bible says that. He will put words in your mind. He will speak to you in your mind. So Satan all also uses that same method. Comes in. The only weapon he has comes in your ear. Go ahead and, 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 and make, make, make love to that girl. Even though you're married. Your wife will find out. Go ahead and, uh, you know, he don't like you. Go ahead and pull the trigger. And the funny thing is. Satan really comes on to you when your emotions kick in. When your emotions kick in, you really can't think straight. Especially when you're mad, that's when he really drives that thought into your head. Like if you're fighting somebody and let's just say you have a knife on you or a weapon, and you're mad and you want to, oh, I feel like he's just constantly putting those words, go ahead, kill him, kill him, kill him so he won't come back to hurt you. You have to really be strong. If you're having an argument with your spouse, uh, he or she really don't love you. What are you doing in this marriage? You're not happy. And he constantly pound and pound and pound. But if we don't capture the thought, we keep thinking about it. It goes into our hearts and it comes out into our actions and our whole lives are ruined. That whole marriage is ruined. Now that marriage might be facing divorce. Uh, you're going to have a battle for, al uh, for alimony, for money. You're going to have a fight to see who, who the kids live with. The whole, your whole world is crumbled. So we have to keep our minds in check. And the only way we keep our minds in check, we keep our minds on God. The Bible said if a Christian constantly thinks about God, God will keep that Christian in perfect and constant peace. So we have to... Constantly think about God. Have the mind of Christ. Think about God. Whatever you do, you think about God. If something comes across your life, you ask God for advice first. Don't go to your friends or your loved ones. I see Christians that go to non-Christians asking them for advice. You're a Christian that's connected to the Most High God. He's your Father. He said, in our time of need, we call on Him, Abba. Abba means father. So in your time of need, you run to a non-Christian who Satan has their minds blinded 
to reality and you run to a blinded minded person and you have God to run to. Sometimes I can't understand why Christians do that. Me? Excuse me. Any situation that comes in my life, I immediately, you know, I'm talking about immediately go to God. If I get a call over the phone, oh, this is going wrong here and there. Okay, God will take care of that. I don't have to, I don't even think about that. Because that's all Satan wants you to do. He wants you to think about that bad news constantly, constantly, constantly. And by thinking about it, now you download that thing into your heart. Now you want to go and try to fix it yourself. When you cannot fix your problems yourself. That's why God said, trust in me. I will fix your problem. So the mind is a very strong thing. It's terrible if you lose focus of your mind. Focus on God, my brothers and sisters. We focus on God. We think about God 24-7. Psalms 94 verse 11 says, the Lord knows the thoughts of a man. The Lord knows the thoughts of a man. So while Satan has put that thought in your mind, God knows he has put it there. So guess what? God is just sitting back now. Okay, I know the thought that Satan put in his head. Let's see what he's going to do. So what do you do? You do like Proverbs 14, 15 say. You give thought to everything. You give thought to it. Why am I thinking this? This is not of God. Delete it. Move on with your life. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. We're speaking of God here. So God is able to keep us, keep our minds in a good state. Because guess what? Satan cannot put words in God's mind. That's why God say, hey, my thoughts? Far from your thoughts. God don't think like man, even though he made man. He don't think like man. God is a superior being. God's thinking level is way up there. That's why he's way up there. And our thinking level is down here. It's like this. So we don't think how God thinks. And God definitely, definitely, most definitely don't think the way we human beings think. Isaiah 55 verse 8. God says, my thoughts are definitely your thoughts. So God is able to keep our minds in check. If we call on him for help, he will be there in a heartbeat. What do you need help with, my son? I tell God, when I first found out about how Satan works in this thinking pattern, I told God that I need help because Satan is causing havoc with my mind. And what did God tell me to do? Just study your Bible. You say study your Bible. By studying your Bible, you will stay focused on me. And what I get from God, I tell my other Christian brothers and sisters in the church and in the YouTube messages. Keep your minds on God. Study your Bible. If you want a focused life and a focused mind, you have to study your Bible. Nothing else will give you that focus. You will see some people that's not Christians focused. True, they might not, they might be focused and they might not be Christians, but it's one thing they're focused on, and that's basically money. Once you have focus on something, you're, you, you have all determination to go for that. So I don't, I take examples. I don't try to focus on nothing material. I focus I try to focus on the person who can give me all that material stuff. I don't focus on money. I focus on the man or the God who can give me all the money. So by focusing on him, thinking about him constantly, I don't think about worldly stuff to get to keep me astray, to keep my mind on worldly things like money and jewelry and women. No, I keep my mind on God because God is where it's at. Excuse me. Because God is where it's at. So, the mind, your mind is always moving. Once you reach an adult, oh, thank you, God, for dropping this in my spirit. Once you reach an adult, you have 
three thought process. You have a parent thought process, an adult thought process, and a child thought process. Now, these three thought processes are always constantly flipping in your mind. Just constantly flipping, 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 flipping. Now, once your emotions kick in, you get upset, that flipping mechanism, it stops. So once you get upset, okay, for illustration, for example, you're arguing with your, with your loved one, with your husband, wife, or wife, husband, you're arguing with them, and you get mad. That wheel will stop. Now, sometimes the wheel will stop on the wrong thought process. Like if you're arguing, if you're arguing with your husband or wife, you are supposed to control that thought process and let it stop an adult. Because when you're arguing with an adult, you want to behave like an adult. But if a mind is not controlled and it's not controlled by Christ and you're not thinking about God, that wheel will stop on the childish or the parent part of the mind. That's why you will hear some wives say, don't talk to me like I'm your child. I am not your child. Because the wheel, when your emotions kicked in and you got upset, your mind stopped on the parent part. That's why even a grown man will say, you're talking to me like I'm your kid, I'm not your kid. Because both of them cannot control the wheel, the thought mechanism that's spinning. So they let that or they let Satan control it for them. Now, don't get me wrong now. None of the thought process is bad because if you're a parent, you need the mind of a parent. If you're an adult, you need the mind of an adult. If you, if you are, uh, if you're in a relationship, you're gonna need the mind of a child because when you go on a date with a woman, a woman don't want a man who's always straight or have an adult mind and the parent mind. Just yeah, uh, I'm a man. I'm serious. And, no, a woman don't want that. A woman, when a woman goes on a date, she wants a man to be funny and, you know, act a little silly. That's where the childish mind comes in. So, you see, as an adult, we have to learn to control these three minds, these three thought processes. And let me repeat them again. It's the parent, adult, and the child. Those three thought processes are always spinning. And they usually stop when we get in our emotions. So, with that being said... I would like to give you this couple more verses and then I'm done. Matthew 15, verse 19. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts. Out of our hearts come evil thoughts. And why is that? Because Satan is evil. And like I said, if you give him access to that hammer and nail and he keeps pounding it, pounding it, and he get that thought all the way into your mind, it downloads into your heart and it comes out into your action. Out of the heart comes evil thoughts. So we really have to watch our minds. The war is in your mind. The last verse I have for you about your mind and your thought process. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. This is how we can help eradicate a bad mentality. The word of God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God, it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Same thing like Christ said. You capture it and bring it under obedience. The word of God would judge that thought. And once it judges the thought, it also judges your attitude. Because remember I told you, once that thought is in your mind, you download it in your heart and it comes out in your attitudes. So the word of God judges everything. That's why this book is so essential to a Christian's walk. You need this book. People will say, oh, that Bible is fake. It's not real. It's written by man. Which is true, because one thing I know, Satan needs the truth to make a lie. He cannot just lie. There's no way you could just lie, because the creator of the whole universe is a God of truth. So Satan needs the truth to make a lie. 
Let's go back to Garden of Eden. God told Eve, don't eat from the tree. That's the truth. What did Satan do? He took the truth and he twisted it. He didn't say you can't eat from the tree. Because he knows if you eat from the tree, you will become like him. So Satan needs truth to make a lie. So the word of God was written by men, but these men were righteous and holy men. They wasn't evil men. These men was men who looked up to God for advice. So God uses those men to write his Bible. God wasn't going to come down from heaven and get a pen and paper and, oh, let me write this and write that. Listen, let me explain something to you. God does not like sin. Sin means one word, disobedience. God doesn't like, he does not like disobedient children. If you're a Christian and you're disobedient, God is not really even looking at you because you're disobedient to him. That was wrong with the Israelites when God rescued them from Egypt. While they was in the wilderness, they was constantly disobedient to God. And God even wanted to kill them. Moses had to, remember, had to remind God that, hey, you can't kill them. Because if you kill them, the other nations would say, well, why did their God rescue them from Egypt and kill them? So God changed his mind. And when they got to Israel, the promised land, for generations and generations and generations until Jesus came, the Israelites were disobeying God. They kept running to idol gods, bowing down to fake gods. And God will always let another nation come in, destroy Israel, and take some of them captive and kill some of them. And when they cry out to God again, God will rescue them and send them back to their land. But they'll do the same thing over and over again. They kept on disobeying God. So God do not like sin. So if God was to come down to this planet amongst all these sinners, guess what God would do? He would just wipe everything clean. He would destroy everything. That's why he destroyed the world by flood in Noah days. Because everybody was disobeying God. So he just wiped them out. So God didn't want to come down to earth and write a book. So he put his spirit on man. Remember, my Christian brother, the spirit is a very powerful force. That's my next message. Once you have that spirit, you could do everything that Jesus did. Because remember, when Jesus got baptized, the Bible said the spirit of God came unto him in the form of a dove after John took him out of the water. And after that, he went around doing his miraculous work and doing his preaching. Once that spirit into your body, you become like God. You have knowledge and wisdom and understanding like God. So, we as a Christian family, we have to really and truly guard our minds. We need to have the mind of God. That's the only way we can defeat the devil. Because, like, he's always on his job 24-7. Satan is not going to stop trying to make your life a living hell until he goes to hell. That's when he'll stop. So my brothers and sisters, I hope that this message really helped you out and you write the scriptures down, study them for yourself. Because like I tell you in all my messages, don't just run with what I say. Take the scriptures down, write them down, take them home and make time for you to study them and ask God for his knowledge and understanding about them. And me and you will come to a same agreement. Because every time I open my Bible, I ask God to give me his understanding and knowledge of his word. Because it's his word. He knows what everything in here means. Sometimes I run across something. I, I try my best to do it on my own. But I, Lord, I can't do it. What does this mean? He might not give you the answer right away. But he will give it to you later on. So we see here that it's good to have a mind that's all about God. Your life will be better. You will think better. When situation comes across you, you know how to handle them better. It will make you a better father, a better husband, a better brother, a better sister, a better mother by having the mind of God, the mind of Christ. Same person. And the only way to do it, excuse me, is to basically study your Bible. As simple as that. Study 
to show thyself approved. A proof of what? A proof of the blessing he wants to give you. God loves to give his children, uh, the Christians, blessings. Especially knowledge and wisdom. I don't know why a Christian even asks for money. Oh God, I need some money. You know, I'm tired of living like this. No. God is just up there like, why are you asking me for money? Ask me for knowledge and wisdom. Then you can think of ways to make money. Because I will drop those thoughts into your head. Solomon, when he was around 17, 18, and he became the king of Israel. Remember, he had to lead over three, over three million people. And at that age, you know, that job of being a king over three million people, that could really run havoc on your mind. Satan could really run havoc on that man's mind. But what did he do? We take examples from Solomon. He went to God and he asked God for knowledge and wisdom and understanding to lead the people. And God said, just because you have asked me for this in the first place and not money and power, I will give you everything else. That's why Solomon was so rich. Solomon was richer than Bill Gates in his time. Solomon was richer than all the oil sheiks in Saudi Arabia in his time. For a simple reason. He asks God for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The Bible said, I, God, gives you the ideas to make money. But you have to ask God for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Because those are the three critical things it takes to build up a strong mind. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Knowledge and understanding give birth to wisdom. Once you have the knowledge, you know how to use it. That's wisdom. Understanding that knowledge and knowing how to use it. Those three key things are the most powerful things in the world and is what a Christian needs. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. God says my people are destroyed or, or being perished from lack of knowledge. That's Hosea 4.6. Look it up, my brothers and sisters. Study your Bible to show yourself approved and once you do that, you will be okay. Nothing, Satan can bring nothing against you because now, once you've reached a certain stage in your studies, you have now become like Christ. And remember, Satan couldn't do nothing to Christ. No matter how he tried to use those Pharisees to kill him before his time, he couldn't do it. Because remember, if you study the Bible, they always try to kill him, but he always slipped away because it wasn't time. So, my brothers and sisters, we need to do exactly what the Bible says, and that's to be like Christ. Have the mind of Christ. Because once you have the mind of Christ, you can see the devil coming. And as soon as he drops that evil thought into your mind, if you are built up in Christ and have the mind of Christ, you can easily catch that thought like, whoa, wait a minute. No, nah, Satan. Now, I know you just dropped that thought in my mind. No, you're not going to make me do that. That's against God. Delete. And he'll come again. But once you stay studying, you will automatically just get, 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 get him every time he pops up. Oh, here you go again, Satan. It ain't going to work. So my Christian brothers and sisters, study your Bible. This is your pistol. This is your AK-47 against Satan. Satan is a spiritual being. He's not of flesh and blood. The Bible said our fight is not with flesh and blood. That means our fight is not with people. But our fight is with spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness. That's Satan. All day. Our fight is with Satan, not people. So my brothers and sisters, with that being said... You know, forgive me of the little sniffling, you know, my allergies. Like I said, I'm here in Jamaica. I'm here in the country. Clean air makes my allergies drain out. And like I say, if you like this message, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel because I am a man of God. God has called me to do this. And actually, this is just a practice run. Putting these messages on YouTube. I might mess up a little bit. You might hear roosters crowing in the background, but I can't do any better right now. God is just 
basically testing me to see if I'm going to do this. And once he's seen that I'm doing it and I love doing it, he will set me up better to where you will hear the roosters crowing, I'll be in a better place. Everything will just be better. But we, all, we also have to have patience because remember, patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. So with that being said, my next message is the powerful Spirit of God and how it works when it gets in you. And remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell. So when I drop a new message, you could get it with an alert. And then you could sit down, study it, write the verses down, study, read, open your Bible, study them for yourself so you can have the knowledge of God and build your mind up and have the mind of Christ. So with that being said, my brothers and sisters to the whole world out there, don't let this coronavirus thing bother you. Whatever these governments are trying to do with this virus, either is bringing a 4G network that is full of radiation or they're actually releasing viruses to, to control the population on the planet. Don't let it bother you, my brothers and sisters, because guess what? God said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Never prosper. So with that one verse, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Or you could say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. With that one verse stuck in your mind, constantly in your mind, you won't have no worries. Christ told the people, why do you worry? It's a sin to worry. God commanded us not to worry. Christ said, if God takes care of the flowers and the birds and the animals, why wouldn't he take care of you? Who is more important? The flowers, birds, and animals, or you? So do not worry about anything. God got you. He is our refuge and our shield in our time of need. And this virus ripping through the world, now is a time of need. And Satan is also using this virus as well, because you see, most churches are closed down. In Jamaica, the government said only 10 people in the church. Last time we was having church, they, the police came and locked us down. So as we can see, only thing I can say about this virus is just the sign of the end. This is the end times, people. Now is the time we really need to study and have our mind set on God, have the mind of Christ. Because we're going to need that in these horrible times ahead. The times are getting worse. So my brothers and sisters, keep your minds on God. Study your Bible and have the mind of Christ. May God richly bless everybody. Not just Christians, everybody. May God turn the unbelievers into believers so Satan will stop messing with their minds and come over to the family of God. Because this is, where, this is where all the knowledge and wisdom is in the power of God, having the mind of God. So thank you for listening, my brothers and sisters. May God richly bless you and your family and keep you covered in these last days. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This is Carlos Spalding telling you have a blessed day and enjoy yourself in these hard times. You're with your family, you're quarantined, enjoy them, play some games. Whenever you can go outside, you guys take walks, but just enjoy yourself. Don't let this thing get you down. Have a nice day. God bless.